that uh, when when this investigation began, um, the investigation began as uh, a a runaway child. Um, as we developed further information, um, uh, we we became uh, more convinced that the runaway portion of this uh, was um, inaccurate or uh, a, a flat out lie. Um, we believe that now we were looking at either a missing person um, or some sort of um, uh, a, a criminality to uh, to this case. Um, at some point, uh, did it become apparent that foul play had occurred inside the house? Yes, it did. When, do you remember when that was? Um, I believe that, that, I mean, we had, we had um, suspicions because, again, without a body, uh, uh, we were not 100% certain initially. Um, and then as, as we were looking um, and completing uh, investigations, the, uh, the leads took us in multiple directions. But all of our information from each individual search, we would, we would gather a piece of evidence, um, uh, take a look at it and say, hey, there's, there's something else going on here. So it led us back to the house. I believe on February 7th uh, was was the date that um, we applied for a warrant to actually seize the residence and hold the residence uh, for 14 days uh, the first time. And then we did a, a second warrant that held the, the residence for another 14 days because we, we were continuing to investigate and every lead that we uncovered um, uh, brought us back uh, to a piece of, uh, uh, of that house. In your experience and training, uh, was she cooperating with the investigation? No. Uh, was she acting as a typical um, parent or step-parent would in a missing kid case? Definitely not. Um, when we're talking about was she acting normal um, based on your training and experience, uh, did you have the opportunity to observe her um, at different times? Um, I did. Uh, uh, well, uh, mainly uh, uh, during interview. Um, and so uh, uh, during uh, the interview uh, on uh, the 29th of January it was the first time that I actually uh, was able to observe the defendant. Um, and then uh, I did observe uh, some of her interactions with media. Um, and uh, we, we were also very closely monitoring um, social media at the same time. Okay. And so when I am asking you questions like, um, was she acting normal compared to other missing kid cases? Um, was she acting in a way that caused you any concern during the times that you could observe her um, that she was not sane? That she was not sane? Right. That, no. that, that she was insane? No. Did it ever get anywhere close to that in the observation periods that you had of her? No. What what it appeared to me was, uh, um, as, as the information developed, it appeared to me uh, that the defendant was very... Um, cognizant of what was occurring and took specific steps, almost being methodical in um, misdirecting and redirecting investigative efforts. Did those efforts, in fact, cause the investigation to be manipulated, especially early on, um, away from the crime scene? Absolutely, yes. To make an arrest in a felony case, what do you have to have? Probable cause. What does probable cause mean? Probable cause is a set of circumstances that um, would lead a, a reasonable magistrate or judge um, uh, or even uh, uh, to, to believe that uh, a crime has occurred and the person that you're arresting committed that crime. Can you arrest somebody on mere suspicion? No. Uh, can you arrest somebody just because a child is missing? No. Um, did you have probable cause on January 29th to arrest the defendant? No. Um, when a arrest warrant was issued in early March of 2020. Is that when probable cause had been achieved and an arrest warrant issued? Yes. Uh, did that unfortunately um, not prevent Gannon's remains from being transported from Colorado to Pensacola, Florida? Unfortunately, it did not. Uh, the fact that um, Gannon's remains were found 1,300 miles away from Colorado Springs, was that indicative of a very calculated move by whoever moved Gannon's remains from here to there? I believe it was. Um, requiring driving on lots of roads and following laws. Absolutely. And ensuring that uh, the transport of a human body uh, was concealed extremely well from anyone um, who uh, uh, may have had contact with that person. And the fact that, uh, were you familiar with um, the location where Gannon's remains were ultimately found? Uh, I, I, do, I don't, I wasn't personally familiar with it, but yes, I do know where, where it occurred. 
Okay. Um, the fact that his body was found thrown over the edge of a bridge, um, is that also indicative of um, somebody trying to hide um, valuable evidence in a homicide investigation? Uh, especially 1,300 miles from uh, the, the reported missing uh, location, yes. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Commander, good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Will Cook, and I'm sure you can tell by now I represent Ms. Stalk. Um, so this was originally a missing uh, child and uh, or originally was a possible runaway, but then became a missing child. What Correct. what day or what time was that where this switch took place from runaway to a missing child? I couldn't give you the exact date and time. Um, it would be within the first couple of days officially. Uh, it went from a runaway to a missing endangered. And did you make that determination to? I did. Okay. And you already told Mr. Allen, while it's important to uh, have a crime scene or a possible crime scene locked down because evidence can disappear, it can be tainted, it can be destroyed, contaminated, all these other things. Is that correct? There's a possibility of that, yes. And that's why you seized the phone you testified to, because she could have destroyed the evidence, uh, 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 gotten rid of the phone, whatever a lot of stuff could happen and so that's why it was important exigent circumstances that you took this phone correct yes, sir that's correct okay and ultimately that's why you seized the house on february 7th to keep evidence from leaving disappearing uh spoiling whatever you want to call it uh once it was determined uh that the uh, that the house is was a uh a point that we kept coming back to um, and realized that the investigative efforts were very complex and um, were ongoing and continuing. Uh, yes, that decision was made. Okay. Now, on January 27th or 29th, I'm sorry, during the interview, you made a determination that there was exigent circumstances to take the phone to seize it uh, for Ms. Stauk, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. You also base that determination on the fact that uh, she had really changed her story. And as Mr. Allen asked you, uh, first story was diametrically opposed to what second story was, correct? Yes. Okay. At that time, uh, you could have arrested her for attempt to influence a public servant, correct? Um, giving the vastly diametrically opposed stories to law enforcement. Uh, remember, uh, at this point in time, we also uh, had no body and um, there was there was concern uh, that that there were additional leads coming in. So um, is there was a there was a possibility that was a concern. Yes. OK. <laughs> Enough to where you were able to seize a phone of Ms. Stauk uh, and to the possible investigation of Gannon's disappearance. Correct. And I'm not talking about, you know, charging her with murder at the time. I'm talking about attempt to influence the public servants. Sure. Why didn't you charge her then? You, you said in your report that we believed she was giving false information. I believed that this went into the calculus about making your decision. Um, of seizing the phone. Why didn't you just go ahead and charge her with something then and arrest her? What would that have uh, gained for the actual investigation into Gannon at that point? Uh, well, it would, I, I, I can't answer the questions. Good. So, I mean, if, that, if, that, if that's a, just a rhetorical question for the jury. So I, I, more of a clarifying question as to where you're going with that. I'm trying to, I would like to help you with that. Well, uh, Commander, there's information that uh, after the 29th, but before the house was locked down on the February 7th, that Ms. Stauk and her family had arrived at the Mandan Drive house with a moving van and moved out of the residence, correct? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember the exact dates, but there was a timeline in there that, that they did move. Yes. It was between her interview on January 29th and, um, but after that, but before the house was seized on February 7th, correct? Yes. Okay. And 
Also, there's allegations and evidence that has come in that actually Ms. Stouch, Stouch, after January 29th, um, after the interview and the phone seizure, transported Gannon's body to Florida and uh, dumped it in uh, a swampy area. That happened after January 29th, but before February 7th, the house being seized, correct? Um, not sure exactly when, when that occurred, but again, I, I would have to actually go back to reports to see the exact timeline. I apologize. I'm not able to give a more clear answer on that. Uh, if you're, if you're, stip, if you're telling me that that uh, is what your understanding is, um, I can, I could agree to, uh, that likely be the case. If she had been arrested on January 29th, uh, at the police station when the phone was seized, uh, then she would have been in custody and not had the opportunity uh, the first week of February to dispose of Gannon's body in Florida, correct? Um, I can't make that, uh, that determination, especially within our jurisdiction. Um, a, 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 a false reporting is actually a misdemeanor crime, which you would be served a summons. And uh, so she would never have been uh, arrested and, and placed into custody. Um, if there was enough information for a felony attempt to influence, that is a very low bond and generally something that uh, people are out on uh, extremely quickly. But attempt to influence, uh, this would have qualified and it is a felony offense. And she could have had a bond set much higher if it was an uh, attempt to influence as part of a high profile murder investigation. You could have asked for a higher bond, correct? Um, again, I believe that at this point in time, you're, you're making an assumption that on January 29th, we were able to prove or, um, or have more than a, uh, a suspicion that Gannon was murdered by uh, 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 his uh, stepmother. Um, so I think that, that that's reaching. All right. Can I have just a second, Your Honor? <laughs> you may go ahead. Get him. <laughs> that's all I have. Thank you. Redirect. 